Ubuntu is a word that originates from the Bantu languages of the Sulu and Kosa. It means something like humanity or civility. Its meaning is often characterized in the sentence, we are who we are through others. And here is an explanation by Bishop Tutu. Ubuntu means I need you in order for me to be me. As you need me in order for you to be you. It is saying, really, we are bound up together. Because, you see, I wouldn't know how to speak like a human being. I wouldn't know how to walk like a human being. I wouldn't know how to think like a human being. All of these things I learn from other human beings. So I actually need other human beings in order for me to be human. And in a nutshell we say, a person is a person through other persons. When I'm mad at someone, I realize that the anger is not in me, that it is not about my anger, and neither is it about the other person. The reason for my anger is not in the other person. It's in our relationship. It's in between me and the other person. Viewing the world with an Ubuntu lens also means that I have a different theory of change. If I want to change my anger, I don't have to work inside on my anger, and neither do I have to work on changing the other person. The best place is to start with our interactions and my thinking about our interactions. I'm going to try to shift the interactions, the real and the imagined ones. I like watching travel videos, and I found a really interesting example. A cycling couple went to a temple in Sri Lanka. And when they left the temple, they found that both of their flip-flops were had disappeared. Now, their conversation could have revolved around how unfair this was and how mean the thief was who took away their flip-flops and how they felt betrayed. And they might have even gone down the slippery fl slope into how this culture is bad, or just anything that goes in the direction of racism. But they didn't. They talked about how the thief probably needed the flip-flops more than they needed the flip-flops. And they talked about how grateful they were for the privilege of being easily able to just go out and buy two new pairs of flip-flops. Their imaginary conversation with the thief went into the direction of acknowledging their common humanity and recognizing their different surroundings. In coaching, we sometimes forget that we are all linked. We forget that we are who we are through others when we focus on describing individuals and their behaviors without their context. We talk about emotions without context, perspective without context, context, values without context, many things that we decontextualize. Insel Kimberg, one of the founders of the solution-focused approach, had a very good way of including the surroundings by always saying, well, they must have good reasons. If we as coaches don't understand the reasons, it's probably a sign of us not having been curious enough and not having asked enough about the surroundings, about the environment, about the other important people in a person's life so that we can understand their good reasons for behavior. Here are a couple of examples where I observed that people or coaches forgot the principle of Ubuntu. If you ask, where is the problem in your body without continuing on to observable behaviors in a better case, for example, suppose the problem felt like you would like it to feel, how would other people respond? How would you notice? How would other people notice? If you just ask about where is the problem in your body, 
you are forgetting that a person is embedded in relationships and you are locating the problem inside a human being, inside an individual, and you're making something that is probably actually in relationships in, to a problem of one individual. Another point where we tend to forget Ubuntu is when we're talking about agency in the coaching agreement. We want somebody to formulate a problem such that they can do something about this. So let's say a client is suffering from a bad relationship with their boss. As a coach, we would like the client to come to an awareness that in the coaching session, we cannot possibly change their boss. And we would like to focus the client on something that the client can do themselves. We want to stop the complaining. A stance that is closer to Ubuntu might be to inquire about how the client would like the relationship instead, what they would see the boss doing, what they would say, see themselves doing. Any form of decontextualized labels, like in 360 degrees surveys with one to five scales on um, assertive or empowering leadership, personality profiles, and the like, they tend to forget the context and the fact that there are usually other people involved in leadership situations, not just the individual leader. Recently, I coached a client who had a high fluctuation in his team. Three people had left. When we looked at this, all of the three people had left for reasons that had nothing to do with my client. However, HR still felt that it would be good for the client to be coached. Now, the client really did profit from the coaching. We used it to reflect on his leadership, what he values, how he wants to show up for his team. But locating the problem of fluctuation within the leader was neither accurate nor helpful. Even if you are using individual assessments, you can integrate Ubuntu into your practice by asking about other people, about the environment, about descriptions of differences that involve concrete, observable situations. As you know, I feel pa passionate about this. One of the reasons is how I want to show up for other people. I want to be a compassionate collaborator for my client's growth rather than a judge with an armory of objective assessments. Maybe you will take this as an inspiration to reflect and figure out how you want to show up as a fellow human being to your clients and how you as a coach are also a person who is who they are through others. And as always, if you like my musings, subscribe, hit the bell, uh, hit like. And if you want to hang out, come to our weekly free meetups and exchange, which you can book at www.solutionsacademy.com slash registration. All of the links are also in the description below. Okay. Have fun. Thank you for listening.